Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be reviewing the KBO Flip from KBO. This is a folding e-bike. Um, comes with, you can see it here, it's got kind of a nice sleek black color. It comes with an attached integrated rear rack, 20 by 3 tires, and overall generally good look, very compact, lightweight, good bike for getting around the city uh, if you live in a small space or space at a premium it's easy to fold up it doesn't take up a lot of space um, light enough that you can carry it as well if you need to in fact it even has this little handlebar here which makes it easy to hold um, but yeah we'll go go i've been using this to get around and run errands pick up things and it's worked out very well for me and i really enjoy this nice little bike here so Let's go and kind of, we'll go over and, you know, talk about what it has and then we'll take out a ride and show you how I've been using it. We've got the tires here. It uses 20 by 3 tires, which are sort of um, in between a fat tire and a regular tire. Brand name is not a brand name I've heard of before, but the tires themselves are solid. They do the job. The disc brakes, it uses mechanical disc brakes. Um, Decent stopping power, you know, nothing that'll blow you away or anything, but it gets the job done as well. Includes front and rear fenders as well. I just noticed that I'm missing a screw on my fender. It must have fallen off, so I'll have to get that replaced. Maybe we'll go and run a little errand and get a new replacement screw for that. Turning to the front of the bike, it has this uh, integrated front headlight that you can turn on from the handlebars really nice hand, uh, light it's really big you can tell and you can kind of adjust it if, as needed but I like that that headlight taking a look at the rear of the bike it's got this integrated rear rack which is nice it gives it a lot of sturdiness to it you could easily hold a basket probably put a kid seat even in there and hold a kid if you needed to or you know if you had to hold up perhaps a passenger you could do that for the motor it uses a 500 watt rear hub motor good solid power on this motor you'll get about 18 to 20 miles per hour um, depending on terrain and everything I'm typically riding about 18 or 20 miles per hour I'm riding which is a good speed for riding around the city you got the mechanical disc brakes again on the back a good solid kickstand you know nothing crazy on this kickstand obviously but it does the job pedals are plastic pedals nothing too spectacular about them but at this price point that's what you'll expect for that Turning to the other side of the KBO, you've got seven speed Shimano shifters. Very smooth shifting. Um, I'm able to switch between high and low gear very easily. Again, the pedals are solid, do the job. And everything here looks very nice and runs smoothly. Not too much clicking or rubbing or anything like that. Next, next we turn to the seat. The seat is a nice squishy seat. I do like it a lot. Uh, unclear what brand it is, but it's a good solid seat that is very comfortable. The battery, as you can tell, is mounted into the back here, which you'd wonder, oh, how do you get the battery out? And to do so, it's actually very simple. There's a little lever here. There's a little lever here on the back. You just push it up. It folds the seat up like that and gives you access to the battery here. Battery is a 36 volt, 15 amp hour battery, lithium ion battery. Comes with a key here. And to take it, you just turn it, pull it up. And you can see it's got a nice little handle here so you can easily hold it, bring it in, charge it, you know, take it with you. And then to put it back in, you just are gonna slide it right down here line it up with the 
this is the part. Sometimes it can be a little tricky. I'm a little trickier for me right now because I'm holding with one hand, but you just slide it down here, into it goes, and then you can just lock it up and turn it on. When the battery is in, you can't take the key out, so you can't really, you won't lose a key at least. Um, in terms of range, you can expect to get, KBO lists the range as up to 55 miles. Uh, I would assume that's if you're basically with no pedal assist at all. In my riding with it, getting more like 25 miles is more realistic, but that's still plenty good for getting around the city. And overall, I think this is a pretty good battery. Okay, next, moving to the handlebars on this bike. It's got rubber grips on the left and right, nothing too fancy there. A kind of little mechanical bell here that you can use to get people's attention. Comes with left and right brakes. And then it has a twist throttle as opposed to a thumb throttle. I, I've always actually preferred the twist throttle because it just makes it a little easier for me to kind of cruise and ride with one hand if I'm especially if I'm holding something because um, I tend to hold things with my left hand and twist with the right. So that's what that's got. And then the display here, turn it on here. It's got, it shows your mile per hour that you're traveling, your pedal assist level, your battery power, and then you've got your odometer as well. So in terms of battery power, you can go level one, level two, or level three, which would be the highest one. And for the bottom part here, you can change, if you push the power button, you can change to different things like trip miles, your voltage on your battery, and the time that you've had the screen on. So, and then to turn on the light, you would just hold the plus button up and it turns on this front headlight. Uh, you won't be able to see it right now because it's daytime, but that's how that works. Looking at the rear of the bike, you've got a rear tail light not an integrated rear tail light there's just a little button on the bottom which you have to push and it turns the light on and the main thing you know it's the reason they don't have it as an integrated tail light is probably for folding purposes because if you did you'd have to run a wire and then that would kind of mess up um, the compactness and the look of the bike not a big deal easy enough to just turn the light on when you need to um, so now we're going to look at the folding mechanism of the KBO. So it folds at two parts. You've got the main frame folding latch over here, and you've got your handlebar folding here so you can fold the stem down. Uh, to fold the stem down, it's just lift this up, bring it down, and then you can just fold it right down here so it will take up less space. And then on and then on the other side here, this is the part that folds the the main frame of the bike. To do that, it's just there's a little button here, you just kind of pull it out and it opens up and you can just fold it up. And it's nice because when you fold it up, it makes it very compact. You can put it in, you know, a corner of your apartment or something, or a corner of your house, or, you know, stick it in your trunk of your car to bring with you, or in the backseat of a car or something. Um, and so it's very useful to have it easy to fold. And then the fact that it has this little handle, because it's a lightweight bike, it's easy to carry with you as needed. You can just bring it along. So let's take it out for a spin, and I kind of walk you through some of the features of the bike and how it rides and what it feels like. Okay, so we're taking the KBO out for a spin. And right off the bat, it's not like the most powerful bike. It doesn't fly off the line or anything real fast, but it's a very comfortable bike, totally fast enough for everyday riding. Here I am at pedal assist level one, which is not, you know, a ton of power on it. And already you can see it's no problem going 15 miles an hour or so. And if I put it up to pedal assist level two, or, you know, let's put it up to level three. It 
gives it plenty of power. I'm able to get up to 16, you know, 17 miles per hour, no problem at all. So, very comfortable, comfortable ride. The seat, the seat is really nice. Uh, it's a squishy seat. So you get a lot of cushion on it. And I think it's a good, I think it gives you a lot of uh, something you could ride for a long time. But yeah, you know, I wouldn't treat this bike as any sort of high performance bike, but you know, if you need to get around, getting at 18 miles an hour or so, 18, 20 miles an hour, definitely fast enough to get you anywhere you need to go. It's very comfortable, very comfortable ride. The handlebars are good, good uh, spacing apart. I like where they put me. You can see the shifting here. You can shift up and down, no problem, easy to go. Got a little bell there, which is good. Yeah. And let's try the brake. We'll just do a little braking to see how it does. Hang on a second. We'll do a little braking to see how it goes. It brakes well. You know, good solid stopping power. And, you know, for brakes like this, the brakes like these are totally fine. These mechanical disc brakes because you're not going to be going like, you know, 28 miles an hour, you're just going to go 18, 20 miles an hour. So you're doing, so you're perfect. But yeah, so who, you know, who would this bike be great for? I mean, I think it would be good for someone, you know, if you're small, it's definitely a small person's bike. I wouldn't use it if you're like a giant, if you're like really big or tall, probably not the best option for you. Just given, um, just given the geometry of this bike. But for someone smaller, you know, I'm a five foot nine, five foot nine, five foot ten, so very comfortable for me. You know, another option to be good for if you if you're an urban, if you're someone who lives in an urban setting, this is a good bike for that because it's small, compact, easy to easy to move around, take with you as needed because you can fold it up. Finally. I've done some deliveries on this bike and I think it's worked out well, you know, because you have the rear rack, you can add a, um, you can add panniers or a little basket or something, which is good for holding food. And then because you can, because it's so small, it's really easy to bring inside places. You know, you can bring into apartment buildings if you need to, or like entryways of, of a restaurant or something. And if you really need to, you can fold it up and bring it inside too. And because of the, the handlebar, either lift it up bring it upstairs something like that so as a delivery bike it's pretty good you know the range is solid you know again you're getting uh 25 to 50 miles of range which should be enough for you know a good amount you know you probably won't be able, you won't be able to do deliveries all day on it but getting a decent number of deliveries done is not so bad you could definitely work a lunch shift dinner shift you know, and you can easily make your money back on this if you think about the price of this bike and what you'll save and having it not worry about parking, tickets, gas, maintenance, all that stuff. Yeah, and you know, another person this could be good for is if you're like an older person, I think this could be a good bike for you too because it's small, not super powerful, so you're not gonna like get knocked off the bike or anything. I do like that it's so low to the ground so I can easily stick my foot down if I, you know, lost my balance. Make it good for, it'll make it great for riding in the winter when I need to uh, get around and, you know, things are slippery. I always like being able to put my foot down. But yeah, it's a good smooth bike. But yeah, it's definitely not like a high powered bike because, you know, I'm using the throttle right here and I'm obviously going fine. I mean, I'm going 18 miles an hour, but it doesn't like fly off the line like some other bikes do. But you know, yeah, I'm at 19 miles an hour, so doing good still with this bike. Yeah, and the, you know, the tires give me a lot of nice smooth ride to it. Um, it's really absorbing the bumps well. But yeah, overall, really enjoy this bike. I think it is a good bike, especially because of the folding capabilities. I love folding bikes. 
and you know there's other folding bikes on the market that are like kind of like this you know you could think i'm thinking of high-end bikes i'm thinking of something like a brompton but a brompton this bike is under a thousand dollars brompton is you know four thousand dollars or something so there's a big difference in price and obviously not everyone's in that price point to get a high-end uh, bike this is a good entry level folding bike for sure that i really think is great Now, if you're someone who likes to pedal, this bike isn't hard to pedal. It's actually, it's totally fine. It's a totally fine pedaling bike, but uh, not like the most comfortable bike to pedal just because of the size of it. So now what I think I'm gonna do, I've got some errands to run. I need to, I'm gonna go try to pick up this extra screw I need for this, um, I'm gonna pick up this extra screw I need for the for this missing bit here for the fender. So I am gonna go and take you guys along with me as I pick up this little screw. So going up hills can be a little bit more difficult. This isn't like a I mean, it goes up the hill, it's fine, like no problem, but it's not gonna fly up the hill. I was able to get up that hill without any issues. Just took a little bit of work. I don't get doored here. All right, and the hardware store is over here on the left. So we're gonna try to run in there grab a screw that we need and then we'll be on our way. So overall, uh, this is a great bike. Really like it for the price point. I think it comes in at under a thousand bucks for a folding e-bike. And with the tires, you know, with the 20 by three tires, you could probably ride it pretty much year round. I don't think I'd, I, I'm, I would plan to use this in the winter too. So. Very compact, looks great, easy to carry, lightweight. Uh, I've had a, I've really enjoyed using it so far.